biggest difficulty with kids is everything they just went through with the pandemic. So kids are much more anxious. They're academically behind. Um, so we're trying to play catch up with them and really trying to focus more so on um, their social emotional well-being. We've been called a lot of things and we're inspired by everything around us, including each other. The individuals that have inspired me the most create beauty and positive change. To me, that's the highest form of art, and it deserves the loudest praise. This is Shout Out, the art of self-expression. On this episode of Shout Out, the first grade teacher and published author of the children's book, The Little Ouch, Catherine Picardi. Originally, I was more interested in child psychology. In growing up, I had always kind of worked with kids and babysitting and camps and things like that. So that sort of led me to um, teaching. And then I um, was able to get some experience with the younger grades and I just kind of fell in love with first grade. We have a flu shot clinic at school. A lot of kids are just as afraid as I am of needles. So I thought it would be cute to just create a story where I could help them overcome the fear that I had as a kid and I had going into adulthood. So that's kind of where the idea was born and it ended up getting released at the perfect time. Welcome to the show, Catherine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very good. Thanks for being on. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. So you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. And when did that journey begin? When did you know that that's what you wanted to do? <laughs> At some point in college, originally, I was more interested in child psychology. Um, but then I started thinking about a career path. And I knew I wanted to work with kids. Um, in growing up, I had always kind of worked with kids and babysitting and camps and things like that. So that sort of led me to um, teaching. And I originally thought I was going to teach an older grade. And then I um, was able to get some experience with the younger grades. And I just kind of fell in love with first grade. So I've been teaching. This is my eighth year teaching first grade. What kind of challenges are associated with, <laughs> with that profession? Um, oh boy, there's a lot of challenges, <laughs> especially lately, like these past few years are definitely different than my first few years of teaching. So I see a lot more kids with needs, like high needs kids, um, whether it's special needs or anxiety, you know, different mental health, um, disorders, um, recently, obviously the biggest difficulty with kids is everything they just went through with the pandemic. So kids are much more anxious. They're academically behind. Um, so we're trying to play catch up with them and really trying to focus more so on um, their social emotional well-being. So we're adopting all, you know, this new curriculum, these new teaching approaches, and we're just collaborating with um, more professionals to try and just create like a calm, positive learning environment so everyone feels comfortable no matter where they are academically. Um, and then just teaching, you know, kind of nationwide, it's been difficult to getting more support. So more support for those kids who have some behavior difficulties um, or disabilities in the class. I think teachers everywhere are feeling a little um, overwhelmed right now, but sure. the kids make it worth it. And so you created a book. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about it? So I, um, I wrote The Little Ouch three years ago. And it took me about a year to um, reach out to publishing companies. And I met with a few different authors who um, kind of explained the whole publishing journey because I had no idea how, <laughs> how hard it was. Yeah. Um, so I wrote it. It took me a year to kind of get into those publishing companies. And um, I did get a few offers. I finally landed an offer with Mascot Books in Virginia and they're a hybrid company. So that means they're a little bit of a mix between self-publishing and traditional publishing. Um, so the cool thing about working with them was that I was able to choose my own illustrator who was all the way in Kazakhstan. So that was cool. Um, so we talked every morning at like 5 a.m. And then 
um, they let me, it was more of like a learning experience. So they kind of let me take the lead on all different kinds of things like the page layout and the back cover blurb and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really exciting. I didn't think it was going to like blow up the way it did, um, but I've been really lucky and it's been such a cool experience. How many illustrators were you looking at during that time? So I reached out to a, a bunch of illustrators and the, the other piece of this was um, I had to kind of put up my own investment for this. So I was a little picky about how much I was budgeting for an illustrator. Um, so I reached out to a lot of different people. I realized some people are way more expensive than others, um, especially depending on different parts of the world and kind of what their portfolio looks like. So I ended up finding um, 99designs website and it's basically an online platform where designers can upload, upload their portfolio and you can pitch a project. So I found Kalima through there and she was really flexible with me on price and then just really flexible with me the whole time. I was a little picky about how I wanted some things to look, but um, I kind of let her take the lead on the illustrations and we would go back and forth almost every morning at like 5 a.m. And she would send me sketches. I would give her feedback and um, she was she was amazing. She was so fast very flexible, very easy to work with. Um, yeah. So I, I lucked out with her. She's so great. That's, that's great. Um, where did the idea come from? Like, when did this all, you said it was three years ago, but yeah. like, what was the first little inkling of the idea? So I, I did always want to write a children's book. Um, I just wasn't sure what it was about. I always had some ideas written down. Um, and then with teaching, we we often use children's books as a way to teach a lesson, like a specific lesson. Mm -hmm. um, so today, for example, I was teaching a lesson on calling out, like using listening lips. And there's a book called My Mouth is a Volcano. So that book teaches the lesson of why it's important to um, keep lip zipped while a teacher is talking or a peer is talking. Um, so I was trying to figure out what I could use as what, what I could use as a tool for the kids in class and kind of what was needed. Mm -hmm. um, we have a flu shot clinic at school. A lot of kids are just as afraid as I am of needles. Um, so I thought it would be cute to just create a story where I could help them overcome the fear that I had as a kid and I had going into adulthood. So that's kind of where the idea was born and it ended up getting released at the perfect time. I think it's a great tool for little kids to know what to expect and that it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, that's that was kind of my hope is that I wanted them to be able to laugh at Penelope and the silly things she does, but also kind of realize at the end, like I can overcome my big fear too. And it's okay to be scared, but it's possible to overcome this fear and it's not as bad as you think it is. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Um, is there is there anybody that you'd like to to do a shout out to? Yes, um, local author illustrator Maddie Frost is amazing. She's so talented. She's absolutely incredible. Um, I actually met her when she came to our elementary school to do an author visit in 2018, and I was just so inspired by her. Um, so then two months later, I ended up. That's when I started writing the manuscript for the little ouch. And I had no idea what I was doing. So I reached out to her knowing that she lived locally. And I asked if she would meet me for coffee and just give me any advice. And she met me and just, I wouldn't be where I am today without her. She really kind of outlined everything for me, explained the process. We changed the name of the book. I just took out a bunch of words. Um, so she really, really helped me kind of kick that off. Um, so thank you, Maddie. She's amazing. She has a ton of children's books out and her illustrations are fabulous. Awesome. And now, is there any advice that you would give um, any young authors or people trying to break into the industry? To never give up <laughs> because <laughs> it is a hard journey. It's hard. And people told me before I started writing, 
how hard it was and I didn't believe them. Um, it is hard, but it's possible. So you just kind of have to stick with it. Like you'll get as you're querying, you know, literary agents and publishing companies, you will get rejections back and you just kind of have to push through it and just tell yourself it's okay. I'm going to find the publishing company. That's the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. And it's okay that if your work isn't everybody's cup of tea, because one thing I learned throughout my whole querying experience is that certain publishing companies are looking for certain things. So yeah. some are only looking for young adults or some are only looking for science fiction or books that take place in New England. Everyone is like very specific um, in terms of their submission guidelines. So um, just kind of stick with it. Use your resources. Anyone can reach out to me. I've helped a few authors along the way, which has been really nice because I know what this experience is like. Um, so I'm always willing to help anyone who is kind of looking for how to get started because um, it is confusing and it, it takes a lot of research. But then once you kind of have your steps put in place, um, it's exciting. Yeah, uh, that's a great note. Persistence is definitely part of the game. You just yeah. yeah. Um, where can we find it? Where can we find this book? So if you visit my website, thelittleouch.com, um, there's a list of links. You can find it. It's on Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Target, Walmart, um, mascot books. And then there's more importantly, there's a list of independent bookstores around the country um, that also carry the little ouch. Great. Well, yeah. thanks so much for being on. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing what you put out next. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Shout out is an Ellering Stories production. For more episodes, visit elleringstories.com.